So copy and paste in online, just so um, we can see the problem and understand why there might be something worth doing here. Um, I'll just show you a few shots of what uh, the competition is doing. I don't know how well you can see that, but... Uh, so this is what happens in Google Docs. I've got a, uh, we have a sample demo document. I just use the spreadsheet. And uh, you copy and paste it in Google Docs from one tab to another tab, and that's what you get um, as of yesterday. Um, it's a little bit unfair because all of the formulae are copied and they refer actually to a data sheet here that isn't there. So it's a little bit tricky, but people do that typically. They have their data and their presentation and separate it. So not, not a great job in, in Chrome. Um, Excel <coughs> does a little bit better, so you get the uh, inline values uh, there. So this is Excel Online, I guess, the, uh, the Office version. And you can see some conditional formatting in there as well, which is uh, quite, quite impressive. Uh, and previously, we used to do this, and in fact, <clears throat> shipping products sort of like, uh, you know, 6.2 uh, and 4.0x uh, for Collabora um, do exactly this. Uh, so you do a CSV import uh, when you uh, paste, which, was, which is not as good as it could be, let's say. Um, not wonderful. On the other hand, the, the very common use case of copying inside the sheet uh, we did with an internal shortcut. So you'd essentially send an Uno copy and an Uno paste, and it would just move the stuff uh, internally. And uh, that's really good to, to do stuff on the server, wherever you can, for several reasons. I mentioned the uh, formulae that Google Docs uh, breaks now. Um, but you know, if you're copying columns around, or you're cutting and pasting formulae in, in calc, it, is, it behaves very differently. It rewrites all of the formulae that depend on your data. So if you move this formula and you put it here, it's not really just moving a formula. It's not really just pasting the content. It's also updating the whole rest of the spreadsheet. And this is really, really, really important part of spreadsheet editing. So we can do that really well. <coughs> and so copying and pasting and cutting and moving inside, I was absolutely fine doing it on the server. And you'll see we prepended the word internal to all of these things to try and make it clear. Um, but this is not, it's not really a great uh, user experience. Um, so yeah, but so, so we only really did plain text when we, uh, when we came out of the, the document. So, so we want to improve it. So well, what, what technologies to be given? What, what do the APIs look like? And the answers are uniformly bad here, unfortunately. So the APIs for copy and paste are frankly terrible. Um, yes, in lots of browsers you can copy and cut whatever you like, put it on the clipboard, any, any, any kind of thing, as long as it's text or uh, text HTML or text RTF in some cases. Um, but there is a whole load of horrendous security stuff uh, that's kind of piled up and accumulated. So there's a very good API for, for sticking MIME types with, well, it's not very good, but you can stick a MIME type and a blob for each of these types uh, on the clipboard, which is great. But in order to make that actually work, there are a whole load of hidden constraints across browsers. You know, you have to have a, a focused entry uh, with a content in it and select it and then run a command as if the user is pressing copy and then handle that event in which you can have an object in which you can somehow set your content, although it doesn't always work. So you then need to catch and, uh, you know, uh -huh, it's pretty, pretty unfortunate. And so in consequence, you see these dialogues are showing up here. So your browser can't access the clipboard, use control C or max C or this kind of thing. Uh, the top one, I think, is Google Docs. Uh, the bottom one is us. Um, you see these around the place. <coughs> if you use control C, if you're a keyboard lover, you probably don't see this problem. But if you use context menu pop-ups, uh, you have this problem, and particularly for paste. Uh, because paste ultimately takes information from your system and you know, then uses it in JavaScript. And it's the Wild West out there on the web. You know, JavaScript is just a crazy, uh, crazy thing. And so wouldn't it be nice if all of your web pages weren't watching your clipboard all the time? Uh, you know, so there is this fear that someone will write the web page that just sits there and steals all of your clipboard and uploads it somewhere continually. And so, you know, as you edit your finance spreadsheets, you know, it's all being, you know, uh, sent somewhere else. And so IE11, I have a good thing to say about IE. Internet Explorer had basically the right idea here. They put up a dialogue saying, ooh, 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 the JavaScript's trying to look at your clipboard. Are you really sure you want to do this? And so you could allow your application to actually access your clipboard which is basically what you want to do. You know, you trust this, it's signed, it's on a sensible site, it should be accessing your clipboard, uh, allow it. Unfortunately, everyone else piled up all sorts of stupid ways of trying to work out whether you should or shouldn't use the clipboard and then left them lying around. Um, 
And uh, so Google, Google have obviously different teams, one of them working on the browser with a, a security team uh, that's paranoid. And uh, then they have the Google Docs people who want their users to have a nice experience. And so this is the compromise. You know, you, you fire up a recently downloaded Google Chrome, you go to the Google Docs and it says, yeah, your Chrome's not good enough. You need an extra plugin that allows us to actually copy and paste, you know? This is what's there today. Pretty silly. Um, so yes, we, we, you know, the, the web needs to fix itself, get its stuff in order, really. Um, but there is all sorts of other stupid stuff. And so in the end, at the end of the day, you're going to end up with a hidden or transparent or off-screen uh, copy-paste area with a font size that's, you know, and, and there's a whole load of just weird, weird gotchas here. Um, and, and there's also security context. So you, you've got it all working and everything is looking beautiful and you discover that actually um, the click that you did on your mobile device for various compatibility reasons isn't a click, it's a touch event. And a touch event doesn't have the security context, you know, even a, a tap, that you need to do copy and paste. So on iOS, everything works. All of the APIs are there, the objects are there, you shove your data into the, the clipboard, and it says it succeeded, and it's all just thrown on the floor. They're wonderful, isn't it? You can't make this stuff up. And actually, what you needed to do it was to have a, have a click, and it's got to have a pop-up security context. So you need, instead of a, you know, some a normal uh, HTML element you can look on, you need an href to a hash. And if you click on this, then all is well. So you know, wasn't that a major security win, all that complexity? Because there's an easy work around it, at least for now, until someone does something even sillier. Um, so IE 11 also has a terrible API, so you can't do HTML copy-paste manually at all. You have to actually create an HTML document in a content area and select it that's hidden. And then when you press Control c your focus is really not on the document, it's on the magic area. And by a combination of three events, you know, before copy, bef you know, copy, and then something else, and a, an idle handler, you can just about mash the content in and out as HTML. And so you may ask yourself, why is it HTML? Oh, oh so the other thing is that we, we really need to put more data into this that you can't see. So text plane is really not going to do it for us. Text RTF is sort of standard-ish. Probably we can put comments in. Uh, but text HTML is pretty much the only place we can put a nice comment in, a magic, so we can talk to ourselves. And when we see this stuff coming in, we can go, ooh, that's us. Let's do something cunning. Um, and you might think that in images, you could do this as well. So often we want to, you know, we can paste images. But actually, images, you, you don't send a PNG through the copy-paste API. Uh, and the security excuse is that you can create a tiny PNG that explodes to a gigabyte big. So if someone copied and pasted this, then they would destroy the machine, basically. And that would be bad. Um, so, so all of the images are unpacked by the browser and then repacked as just pixels. Um, so getting any metadata through that channel is practically impossible. So you're dumped, uh, lumbered with text HTML, and that's it. Um, yeah, and the mobile situation is, is, is even worse than the iOS, you know, the iOS quirk here. So just getting a button. So the idea that there is a system button you can press, like Control-C, that we can trust from a security perspective, is difficult when there is no keyboard and no control key. Um, so there is a nice button on the keyboard in iOS that has that. Android doesn't have it. Gboard does have it. It has a built-in clipboard magic-y thing. Um, but it throws everything away except text. And, and while it's converting your HTML to text, it also handily throws in a whole load of things like the title and the metadata as actual texts as well. So it's just impossibly broken. Um, and there's nothing you can do. Um, so yeah, even, even detecting that the copy has succeeded or failed is really not trivial. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so that's one set of real badness. The security people have gone wild off the reservation. <clears throat> the second problem is that um, all of the clipboard APIs are synchronous. They assume that all the data you want to put on the clipboard is already in the browser when you want to put it there. And this is simply not the case. You can select a whole spreadsheet, and it can have 10 to the, 9, 10 to the 13 cells in it, something like that. And you can't put those all onto the clipboard uh, before you know someone's going to paste them and, and going to paste them somewhere else. And this is really horrible for us. It's terrible for VDI clients. There are all sorts of aspirational standards that supposedly fix this uh, uh, that are poorly implemented and underused. And the people implementing them say, oh, we've got this brilliant new API, but for security reasons, we only use text plain. And here's our little demo that can copy text plain more easily. And you're like, great, that wasn't really what we needed. 
So, yeah, so, so this is really bad. And it's, it's easy for people like Google Docs that put a lot of the document in the browser. But for us, we have a lot of document on the server side. And so it's just not there to put in. Um, the other stupid thing the web APIs do is that they demand all of the data be there at once. So LibreOffice can paste as a BMP, a meta file, several kinds of meta file, you know, um, and obviously ODF and RTF and text HTML. And all. But the cost of generating all of these different formats for a large selection is quite significant. Um, so it's, it's, it's a bit of a pain. And, and so normally, normal copy-paste APIs have a negotiation phase where they say, hey, I've got all these formats you could have if you want one. And the other guy goes, eh, I prefer this one. And he asks for one and gets that, um, rather than having to do all of this generation, shove it, and then do it back again. But I don't know. Whoever, whoever created the web copy clipboard APIs obviously hadn't read or understood just basic operating system you know, uh, clipboard APIs, because it's all there. It's been there in like Windows since <clears throat> years and years and years uh, for efficiency reasons, because often these old machines are quite small. So how do we improve things? How do we make a user interface that works on top of this for copy and paste? Well, so the answer is we try and keep it simple. So if you select a little bit of text, um, not, not a vast chunk of stuff, we essentially push this. At the end of the selection, we send, send the results to the client so we've got it there, so we can immediately put it on the clipboard. Um, of course, if it's a more complex thing, even like a shape or something like this that can appear in multiple formats, there's a problem there. Um, so instead, we put a magic on the, on the clipboard, uh, which basically says at the bottom of the screen, you can hear, see here, this. it says this, to paste outside online, please first click the download button. So we put that on the clipboard, and we put on it a magic that, that is hidden away behind the text that says, this is us. <clears throat> so if you take this and you paste to another online window or you paste it inside the same application, we go, ooh, that's us. We can short circuit this all on the server, or we can, we can download it and re-upload it uh, transparently for you. But the reality is if you click on a complex chart and you want to paste it into you know, uh, Microsoft Word Online or something, we need to be able to download that as an image in all these different types, populate the clipboard, and then paste it elsewhere. So they have this nasty start download button that pops up, and this dialogue on the right that tries to explain the sorry situation we're in. You know, like, you know, we, <laughs> it's not us that sucks. You know, the web is really uh, there to ruin you. But luckily, because of this, this magic, uh, magic inside that gives the origin of the, the content, for any copying and pasting between you know, online instances, different tabs and so on, now we can do a really good job. We actually have a, a connection to ourself that's relatively robust. And it looks like this. We use actually just the meta origin. <coughs> which says where it came from. And uh, hopefully you can see some of these, these horrible things here. But this basically has the WAPI uh, like WAPI like URL in it that identifies where, where it came from, the source of the thing. And yeah, the file it's in. And then some security, magic, a tag, a very large hex number. Um, and we rotate those numbers every a couple of minutes. Um, so yeah, not conceptually horribly difficult. Um, so for our data, we then, yeah, there's a whole load of asynchronicity downloading that because web requests are asynchronous. And sadly, as all MIME types, re-uploading it as all MIME types, injecting that into a kit process, and then sending a new no-paste, which then uses the existing PC code um, to sort it out. Um, yeah, um, if we have uh, images inside things, we, we uh, try and download Base64 for that so that we can have some kind of self-standing um, uh, uh, because, of course, serving images as, as web URLs that are eternal is not really very cool. It's not, that's not really where we want to be. So there's a chunk of work to base64 embed those things um, and make that nice. And so we then have a new clipboard endpoint. So you, you talk to online, and there's a sort of clipboard sub, sub point. And that either talks to the kit and, and gets the data, or, well, it does some other horrible things. Obviously, when you close the document, you have this, this problem that, well, you know, there was a whole, whole chunk of data on the clipboard. And you may think closing the document is not a common case, that you copy, close the document, open another document, and paste. But actually, this is the normal case on mobile. So if you're using a mobile device, you tend to have one window, and you copy, you close the document, effectively load another and paste it, and, and then what? Well, hopefully it should work. And so you know, we, we try and then serialize these things and keep them around. But this makes life horrible, because as you shut down the process, there's a whole extra phase in the state machine 
to try and interrogate its clipboard, serialize it, get it out, and save it. And there's some other gotchas, like um, we're really dealing with multiple clipboards. So if you go paste in, in, in LibreOffice, it knows there is nothing on your clipboard. And it looks at its system clipboard, and there's no system inside the kit. And it goes, oh, nothing to paste. We won't even bother putting the paste bit up. It's super clever. But of course, it's not seeing your, the paste buffer or the, the clipboard on the, P, you know, on the client, on the, on the PC. So we basically just clobber it, and we ensure there's always a, a paste uh, item comes up there. Um, dialogue pasting, again, is, is, is pretty horrible. So anyway, after, the, um, after all of this work, we, we move to a, a more positive place, let's say. And I think probably better than either of the previous uh, two Google Docs or Microsoft Office. So maybe you can see some of the, the conditional formatting flags down there, stuff, you know, data coming across, uh, formatting. Because it's essentially doing a rich uh, ODF uh, transfer from, what, from one side to the other. Quite why it misses the charts, I don't know. But of course, if you, um, if you manually copy the charts, you can get those too as real charts and not images. Um, and so we can start to then actually have some, something that really, really works uh, really nicely. So then there's a whole load of other problems, like say on the Mac, for example, if you paste from Safari, um, you select something in Wikipedia. Shoot, cool. Am I running out of time or? No, back? You want to go back? No. The camera was not working. <laughs> Smile. <there. laughs> Done? The slides will be published online. Jolly good. Um, so, so on the Mac, um, I think you know, we discovered you know, the, the customer is testing, and they test on Mac, and they copy from Wikipedia in the Safari browser, and it, 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 it generates RTF, but the RTF doesn't include uh, the images, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so, so when you paste it into your document, they're like, ah, oh, you didn't paste the image. And we're like, yeah. Uh, so uh, we did exactly what we were told by this dumb browser. Um, but one of the great joys of copy and paste is you have no idea where it comes from. It's one of these end-to-end -end power law testing problems. And um, yeah, so you just have to disable RTF entirely on the Mac platform. Uh, it's the only fix, uh, which is slightly depressing, really. Possibly we could uh, introspect it and go, oh, well, that's the really lame Safari thing that doesn't work yet, and we have no way of fixing, and uh, blacklist it. But Anyway, uh, so you discover these little joys as you go along. And uh, yeah, security-wise, so we create a new clipboard access key. It's a hard random number of, of, of a very long, long length every couple of minutes. And we push that proactively to the clients, and we accept that key and the last key. Or you can just disable copy-paste if you're paranoid. Um, unfortunately, our text plane is, is less good than it was, um, because we now actually convert HTML to text on the, on the client. So we send just one HTML version. And then we do an HTML to text conversion in the browser. And would you believe it, browsers have no good way of converting HTML to text. Nothing at all. Yeah, whoa, browsers APIs suck. But you would have thought that this would have been something that browsers were quite good at. I mean, honestly, you know, they have whole, they spend their whole life trying to do exactly this, but there's no good way of doing this. A sort of like manually writing regex to parse out HTML, you know? And so, yeah, we shove it, we shove it in an HTML element inside the DOM. And then we request it back as text. And it does just a terrible job, like a really awful, awful job. Redundant line breaks, you know, extra guff, poor layout, da da da. It's just hideous. So it's possible, you know, because the sad thing is we actually had very good text copy and paste beforehand because LibreOffice was doing it. And LibreOffice has all this text layout stuff. And I can, oh, yeah, it can actually do things. And, um, and so it was really good. But now, unfortunately, it ain't. So. Need to fix that. Anyway, so the punchline is we have lots of great copy-paste code around. We can do file formats no one has ever heard of. You know, we can we can populate your clipboard with things you know in, in just the most weird weird formats. Uh, but the web then just basically screws us over with bad APIs, um, you know, synchronicity, no content negotiation, and just trying to to hurt you at every step with pointless security nonsense. And yeah, it was a shame. So it's a bit of an epic fighting this. And there were several uh, people. Ash uh, was helping uh, here, and uh, Shimon, I think, and uh, Marco, and Miklosh, and Aaron, and various other people trying to uh, get this working against uh, time. And beyond that, yeah, thanks for our customers and partners who uh, you know, pay to make all of this possible, we, we hope. So uh, that's that. Any questions? How are we doing for time? Time, time, 10 minutes. I talk too fast. Perfect. Aha, Anna, go. Uh. 
<laughs> so if you look at the market share statistics of browsers, Firefox has disappeared pretty much. Like it's very small, but yes, of course we test for it. So in, in terms of our test matrix, I was been testing on um, IE 11 on Windows, Firefox on Windows, Chrome on Windows, Edge on Windows, um, Safari on Mac, Chrome on Mac, Chrome on Linux, Firefox on Linux, uh, on iOS, um, the native browser on iOS, also the embedded web view on iOS inside the Nextcloud app. I should have perhaps uh, talked a bit more about that. And the same on Android, but then of course the embedded thing is also multiple versions of different browsers depending on which Android you have. So yeah, I mean, like, as I say, the test matrix is pretty bad in terms of having a factor of 12 or something across five platforms in it. And then you have all of this application to application problem. So it's like, well, I paste a shape from LibreOffice Writer into LibreOffice Calc. So that's one kind of problem. Um, but I paste it into Google Docs or the, you know, another web view or another, you know, like native applications, what happens? And the, the test matrix explodes as you, as you have these different types on different platforms pasted to each other. I, uh, and, you know, and, and some of these web APIs, APIs are so bad that they're timing sensitive. So they work when you test them in the browser, uh, in, in the debugger. I mean, literally, you know, like, I, so many times I thought, yes, we finally found the security problem, it works, because in the debugger, when you debug it, it works. And then it doesn't work on the actual device. There is a, you know, and there's, there's no, it's just a race condition or an interaction of the debugger, or there's a timing problem that's screwing their security checking, and it just, it just works when you debug it. Yeah, really nice. Um, so, so, you know, um, but so, yeah, pasting, for example, from Mac OS into the emulated iOS device on uh, there works really nicely. Uh, but then, of course, it doesn't work on the actual device. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a testing nightmare. And, it's that, uh, and then you get to some points that, you know, LibreOffice copy and paste is not as loved as it could be anyway on the PC. So it's relatively easy, for example, to select something on the PC uh, LibreOffice draw and paste it into Impress and discover you've got blue boxes instead of transparent ones. So like there's, there's, there's underlying problems even in the easiest possible case of PC to PC copy paste. And we haven't fixed them all, but we're getting better. So uh, yeah, if you, if you have a, a death wish for uh, testing uh, to the nth, you're very welcome to uh, <laughs> you know, get involved and uh, help, help report problems. Um, but like, like all things, I think we now have a pretty good infrastructure for doing this. I think we understand most of the problems. Um, and it's just detail now, lots of detail. That's my thing. Good question. Look at that. Look at that honor guy. He rocks. So yeah, Firefox is uh, Firefox is. I use Chrome, but you know, people use Firefox. Anything else? Oh, uh, cool. I'm not sure if I can be considered as impartial, but um, do I accept the rate if I say it's quite impressive if you guys are the pro or teaching? It's. Yes. Yes, it's many man months of work and a hard one. Yes, uh, against the deadline. So uh, again, you know, so it, it looks easy, but it's it's not quite as easy as you might hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, I wasn't a JavaScript programmer. In a, in a previous smooth and innocent life, I was not not doing JavaScript, and now I wish I hadn't. You know, it sort of scars you for life. Yes, JavaScript is an industry disaster area, as far as I can see. It needs, yes. Come the revolution, lots of people will be put against the wall that created JavaScript, but no, who knows? It's, I, I, it is what it is. I, I think you can look at LibreOffice and you, you can see in document formats what, what you have in functionality in, in JavaScript. It's, it's layer upon layer of you know, previous decisions that you have to live with. Good, good questions. Anything else? We have another five minutes. Ishmael moved strangely there, but it wasn't a question. Okay, well, you've been very good. Thanks very much.